important, obviously. You have your geometric or spatial intelligence. You have your social intelligence, which Professor Howard Gardner thought was the most important intelligence. And you have your creative intelligence. And in the answer to the question on what is creativity, I explored what that intelligence involves you in doing. Exactly. And these are the intelligences that the child needs to have flowering. So that is the age we are in, a very exciting age. And in that age, we explore intelligence. And that is what we have been doing in the morning, and it's leading us inexorably and delightfully to the idea of the mind map and to your radiant ability to think. Now, in academia, and especially psychology, it has been known for many years, as I mentioned earlier, that we think with words. And thus, we write notes with words, etc., etc. So we're going to do an exercise now in which you will check your own thinking. And I'm going to ask you to imagine, it's another imagination game, that you are a super computer. And I'm going to ask you to access a piece of data, and I want you to examine how long does it take you to access it from your almost infinite database, which is your memory? So how long does it take you to access? What does your brain give you? And are there any associations or colors connected to what your brain gives you? Are you ready for the piece of data? piece of data I want you to access is banana. Play with it. Don't talk yet. You're examining. You're examining. How long did it take you to get access? Don't talk yet. Play with it. Don't talk yet. Don't talk yet means don't talk yet. I want you to examine how long did it take you to get it, whatever you've got. What did your brain actually give you? And what were the associations, colors, connections related to it? And really just explore that. And now on your tables, share it with all the people on your table. How long did it take? What did you access? What were the colors and associations starting now? Okay, group, let's explore that together. First question, how long did it take you to access that piece of data? Yeah. Now, every group on the planet responds in exactly the same way. They all say nanosecond, microsecond, instantaneous, just like that. No matter what level of education, how old, sex, race, religion, color, makes no difference. All respond the same. Instantaneous. Just like that. Now think what that actually means you're saying. You are saying when you say that, that I am supposed to believe that you're an absolute genius. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Because you're telling me that you were able to access from a limitless database a randomly thrown at a piece of data, and to do it just like that. Impossible. No supercomputer can come even close to doing that. And if you can explain how you did that, which no scientist has yet been able to explain, if you can explain how you did it, you will get a Nobel Prize. And you will get it just like that. 
because everybody wants to know. So the average child is doing that all day, every day. Instantaneous access. And it's so smooth and so elegant and so immediate that we don't even notice it. We say, we were just having a little chat with our friends. And a little chat with our friends means that we were consistently, every microsecond, accessing from a, an infinite database, randomly thrown at it, instantaneous pieces of it, data and information and image, et cetera, et cetera. And we were interlacing those into a semantic structure or an associational, international, global-sized network, and then making sense and asking questions and disagreeing and responding in the same way, and et cetera. Impossible. And yet you do it every day. So the first part of this exercise confirms the astonishing capacity of the memory, the brain, the retrieval system, the storage system. Next, when your brain gave you that piece of data, did it give you a nice little computer printout that said B-A-N-A-N-A -A -A space A? Did it give you that? What did it give you? Image, 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 image. How many of you got an image with associations and colors? Keep your hands up. Hop, hop, hop. Look around. Keep them up while you look around. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the human race. Because that is how we think. We have thought for years that we think with words, and we don't. Words are a subroutine, vital subroutine. But they're a subroutine. The way we think is going to appear on the screen. Image, whatever it is. And from that image, radiate the associations. So the brain's primary thinking tool, tools are image, the imagination, and association, the ability to link. And that is the human language. And Hindi or English or Mandarin, or Zulu, or Argentinian Spanish, or German, all those are spoken subroutines to the meta language, which is imagination and association. So from now on, you will never meet a foreigner who doesn't speak your language. And five-year-old children know it far better than adults. You can go to holiday places where you know, parents with their very young children, and you hear the parents saying, don't go and play with those children, because those children don't speak our language. And within two minutes, what are those children doing? Playing with those other children, speaking the language. And within an hour, they can have a new best friend who doesn't speak a single subroutine word that they do. But they speak the language. So that is the language. <clears throat> and if you now think about it, that is the language of what? The mind map. That's what a mind map is, central image radiating branches. It's that it's made more elegant by organizing those radials into organic branches and then associations off those and associations off those. So the mind map is image and association, imagination and association, radiating from a central star of thought and building, so you are now seeing in front of you the fundamental architecture of thought. This is the architecture of the way we think.
central image, main organic branches, second level branches, and from the second level branches, third level branches. Taking any branch, any branch, let's take this one. Could we add a branch to that? Yeah? Could we add two branches to it? Yeah. Could we add a branch to either one of those? And either one of those? For how long? Forever. Infinite of one branch. And how many branches are possible? Infinite. So you have an infinity of infinity as the natural way in which the brain functions. An infinity of infinities. Not a list of five or six things. So the idea of a mental block in terms of the way the brain is designed is absurd. But a mental block, when you are blocking it time, is very, very understandable. So this frees you once again. And you can apply this thinking to anything. Could you apply this to solving a problem? Yes. Could you apply it to communicating? Could you apply it to teaching a child geography? Could you apply it to planning the future of your own company? Obviously. Could you do them all in Chinese? Could you do, all them, do them all in Arabic? So the mind map is the meta language. All the other languages, the subroutines, actually fit into the meta language, the mind map itself. So you saw your mind map, and then we're going to give you an example. Many of you have asked me to talk about the left right brain, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it in mind map form. To actually use a mind map now to talk about part of the theory behind mind maps. How many of you know about the left and right brain? Good. How many of you know the functions of the left and the functions of the right? Nearly 100%, which makes you one of the highest level groups that I've met in terms of knowledge of the left and right brain. If you do know it, which we will check. So you know you know, and I'm sure you do, so we will check. The cognitive skills, the left and right brain skills, are skills. And Professor Roger Sperry, the Nobel laureate got a Nobel Prize for this original research in which he simply was measuring brain waves while people thought. And the way in which they thought, to his surprise, was actually reflected physically in the brain. The left side of the brain, he discovered, was dominant or became active when what kind of thinking was going on? Logical, linear, language, mathematics, analysis. Let's see. There is the brain. Science, said somebody. And we're going to mind map it. And you're welcome to mind map along as we do this. So words, numbers, lines, lists, logic, and analysis. 